every now and then a movie like Showdown at the Grand comes along and it reminds me why I love doing this. Why I love getting into the studio and doing this, talking to you guys. Like, I don't get paid to do this, it is literally a hobby and that's all good, I don't mind that, I just love doing it. I've been doing it for like six, seven years now. When I see a film that I just know, I just know that it's probably gonna go by the wayside. Yes, it'll probably get seen in America by a few people because it's an American made movie with American actors, but in the UK, it's probably gonna go unnoticed. And that's why when I see it, I need to get in here and tell you about it. This movie is Showdown at the Grand. We have Terence Howard in the lead role, in a role that I don't think I've seen him as good as since Hustle and Flow. Like he was great in Hustle and Flow, you have to admit. And I don't think I've seen him that good but now, this movie, Showdown on the Ground, is peak Terence Howard. My name is Kevin Halden, this is Nerdly Out Loud, the official channel of nerdly.co.uk. Your favourite British home for all of your news, reviews and exclusive interviews. I like to cover everything from the big budget to the low budget to the no budget, with a special keen interest on the lower end of the scale. But before we get into it, please do all those amazing wonderful things that we love you to do and it really does help the channel. I know you hear that a lot on these YouTube videos, but these things genuinely help. Anyway... Do all those things, like, subscribe, ding the notification bell, and if you don't want to do any of those things, then do me a favor and just let somebody know. Let's talk about Showdown at the Grand. Here at the Warner Grand, we operate 365 days a year. We got a little something for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the man who saved the world thrice, killed Dracula twice, only got his heart broke one time. Claude. Luke Holiday. Oh boy. <laughs> Our company. And I have decided for this one that I am going to change up my routine a little bit. No, I'm not. That was a lie. If you've been here before, if you've seen my videos before, then you'll know how I like to roll. I like to talk about the plot of this movie, and I'll try not to give too many spoilers. Then I like to talk about the cast and the crew of this movie, and the cast of this movie is pretty solid, by the way. And then I'll get into what I did and what I didn't like about this movie. Not a lot. It's, it's you know, like, it's mostly positive, to be fair. And then I will jump into my final rating of this movie. So Showdown at the Grand is basically a really cool homage, a love letter to the cinema age of old so like back when we used to go to the theater and it used to be an experience that's what showdown at the grand kind of is terence howard plays george fuller he owns the grand the grand is a theater like an old school theater you know they have the popcorn stands out front with the little girl who wears the hat and you know you remember it you've seen it in back in the day and all that so he owns one of these probably the last one of these in america it's not really time specific so i don't know what we're dealing with here but it felt like it was probably modern day or at least not far off it and he's got this love of like old school movies like the old school badass you know like think in real life like your john claude van damme's your Arnold's, your Sylvester's, you know, all those guys, Chuck Norris from like back in the day. So he's got a love of these guys. One in particular is Claude Luke Halliday. And he is just like this actor from the, this bunch of movies that he absolutely loves. And in these movies, the main character, the protagonist, it's like the 80s where he's fighting zombies, Nazis, strippers, and werewolves. Sometimes he's fighting zombie nazi stripper werewolves so why not like but he is totally in love with this guy's movies because it reminds him of a time it reminds him of a certain caliber of actor so that's mostly what he plays in his theater now he does live in this little bumfuck town where these people have come like these prospectors or these builders have come to the town and they've decided that they want to turn this into the town of tomorrow to do that they need to buy up the land and they've pretty much done all that but now they have to buy the grand is george gonna sell up probably not so they're probably gonna have to strong arm it a little bit so that he can buy the grand stuff and things happen they attack one of his friends and then George kind of turns into his favorite kind of action star and decides, I'm going to kill them all and it's all good. 
And at the same time, while all of this is going on, he's also managed to talk Claude Luke Halliday into coming to the theatre to present one of his movies. Of course, as you might expect, it's like, when he gets here, he can help me get these guys gone. That is the premise of this movie. It's really cool. Like, I, I had... I had so much fun with this movie. It's a nice slow burn, and it just sort of like gets in, tells you the story of the theatre, reminds you what you loved about the cinema, and reminds you, like, he's basically turned it into a little bit of a museum where he's got like artifacts from old movies that Claude Luke Halliday was in, and it's like, it's just great. And every now and then you get a little clip of the movies that he's in. And I wanted to see one of those movies. Like, I want to watch one of those movies because they looked solid. Um, let's get into the cast and crew. And first of all, Terence Howard. Terence Howard, I don't think, has been this good since Hustle and Flow. He's committed to this role. I really feel like he was into it. He knew what it was. The film knew what it was, which really helped. And he just played into it. He leans into all the little idiosyncrasies that George Fuller would have. And that, for me, like when I can feel an actor who feels the character, it's all good. It's all gravy. You can't go wrong. The way I feel when I watch some of my old school movies and I watch some of the actors that I loved in the day, that's the feeling you get with George Fuller. He's the last of a dying breed of cinema owner in the last of a dying breed of cinema who's about to meet the last in a dying breed of action star. So it's like, it's all those things that... I personally feel when I go to the cinema and that's why this movie struck a chord it does help that there's some kick-ass fight scenes and it does help that it's funny at time Claude Luc Halliday we have to talk about him it's Dolph Lundgren I buried the lead for too long it's Dolph Lundgren and he's just brilliant he's not doing a whole great deal but he does not have to he can basically retire off that Expendables money now. So if he wants to keep coming and doing the odd movie where he just basically is Dolph Lundgren, I am fine with that. I am absolutely fine with that. And that's what he's doing here. Plays it really well. And when he gets to the theater and they start taking on the bad guys, that's when the movie really takes off. And he comes into his own and him and Terrence Howard are perfect together. If you watch The Mentalist, which I did back in the day, Amanda Rigetti is in this movie and she's awesome. At some point in the movie, I will not give too many spoilers, but at some point in the movie, she be fighting. And she has got some fighting chops. She gets a samurai sword at one point and is actually having a proper fight. And she looks like she can hold her own John Wick style or Jane Wick style. She, she's brilliant. I really, really liked her in this movie. She's not in it a great deal, but the scenes that she's in, you feel her presence. And you feel like she's a bit of an evil bitch. And I like that. But then I get to the absolutely scene-stealing son of a bitch that is John Sklaroff. I've probably butchered that name. I feel like I did. If I did, I'm sorry. It's nothing against you. I'm just terrible with names. But John Sklaroff, for me, is fantastic. He's kind of one of the henchmen of the movie, but he's got this real love of film as well. He starts dropping movie quotes. You do kind of get the feeling that he's only doing that because this is the job he's on. Like, if he was at a bowling alley, he might be cracking bowling jokes. Can you do? Are there bowling jokes? I don't, they probably aren't. They probably aren't. Like, maybe you could pick up a spare. I, I don't know. No, probably isn't. But he, he, it feels to me like he's that character that lives the way he is so when he's in that moment and he's on that job and he's taking on a theater owner he starts dropping movie quotes but the best thing is he knows them all and he knows everything about the movies i loved it he's a scene stealer i cannot say enough for this character the character is called burton when you watch it watch out for burton again his scenes are kind of spread throughout the movie. He doesn't have a massive great deal to do, but when he's on the screen, you 100% can't look anywhere else. So yeah, director Orson Oblowitz, you have made an absolute banger for me. Like, I think you've done a great job. This is a director that I don't really know, I'll be completely honest. I think he's done like four or five movies before. And again, I'll be honest, I haven't seen them. That's on me. But I will 100% be checking out what he does next. Because this was written and directed by Orson Oblowitz and it's a movie that speaks to my heart it's a movie that speaks to all the nostalgia that I have for going to the cinema like 
my kids don't really like going to the cinema because they've got Netflix at home. They can watch whatever they want, whenever they want, from their bedroom. But to me, there's still something super special about going to the cinema. And Showdown at the Grand, I would love to have seen this at the cinema because it's about the cinema. And that's what makes this director a find for me. That's what makes him someone I'm definitely going to check out in the future. That's what makes this movie so special in a different kind of way. So what I did and what I didn't like, there's not a lot I did not like, if I'm completely honest with you. The movie moves at a nice pace. It starts nice and slow to introduce our characters. They use some quite inventive ways of getting from space to space. They use some quite... They use some really nice transition kind of things to get the conversation moving around. I think all the actors are putting on great performances. There's the guy that owns the pawn shop, I forget the guy's name. I forget his name, but those scenes are great when they're beating him up. Really like that, I thought it was going down a really dark way. I thought it was going down a really dark way. I love the little movie vignettes that you get throughout the movie. I would want to watch one of those films in its fullest. And then when, when George kind of is engrossed in the movie that is what i am like when i'm in the cinema especially if i'm watching something i've seen a million times it's not a perfect movie no movie is perfect but honestly when you sit down and watch this it's a good time it just rolls by it doesn't feel all that long at all and by the time you're really getting into it it's finished so yeah um i'm gonna drop a five out of five on this movie showdown at the grand for me gets five out of five and if you can catch it on vod or digital or physical if you see a dvd of it somewhere if you see it streaming somewhere absolutely check out especially if you're someone like me who has a keen love of the theater experience a keen love of the cinema going if you're like that i think you'll really dig this movie i really do and i hope you check it out so if you're one of those guys Watch this movie. I'm giving it 5 out of 5. Um, Orson Oblowitz, director, writer, I can't wait to see what you do next. I'd actually quite like to talk to you about this movie. If you happen to see this, which you probably won't, but if you do, I'd love to chat to you at some point. Um, but I am going to go because now I'm just trying to pimp out my podcast, my reviews to get an interview and that's never good form so i'm gonna go my name has been kevin halden this is nerdly out loud the official channel of nerdly.co.uk please do check out all the videos below we've got loads of reviews loads of interviews loads and loads of things down there for you check out the website where we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of reviews written by some awesome freelance reviewers that we've got some amazing on staff reviewers that we've got and please just check out all that stuff as well hit that like ding that bell everything like that but if you don't want to do any of that then just tell a friend just walk up to somebody whisper in the ear whisper some sweet nothings listen to the kevin alden nerdly out loud podcast just do some of that and if they listen that's awesome but again most of all all I can say is watch movies, watch independent movies as well as the big budget movies and please, please, please go to the cinema, support your local cinema, do all that good stuff and I'm out.